G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome back to another FIFA 18 World Cup playthrough. Haven't posted one of these for a few weeks, but of course, we are well in World Cup FIFA at the moment. Halfway through match day two at the time of recording and... I decided that I wanted to go ahead and do another one of these World Cup playthroughs. So, we have decided to take over Spain in Group B, see how things will go, and see if we can save them, I guess, from the capitulation that came following the uh, last-minute departure of their manager. They've done all right so far, got the draw against Portugal, got the win against Iran, but... It hasn't been super convincing, and I'm going to see what we can do with this Spain side. So, if you do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like on it. And also, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. Interested to see how this video does, and that will determine whether I post any more of these World Cup playthroughs in the future. But anyways, we're taking on Portugal in the first game here. Of course, a 3-all draw in real life, and we had the perfect opportunity there to take an early lead. David Silva could have got us that lead, but unfortunately the shot was lacking. Portugal putting up a bit of a fight. Rafael Guerrero going a bit further up the field, but his shot is pretty tame. And it was a pretty tame first half, to be honest. But the second half began with Cristiano Ronaldo going there to Silva. Back to William Carvalho, looking for an option. Goes there to Silva again. The AC Milan striker hits it, but De Gea, unlike real life, was able to make the save. And we're looking to keep them out. We're soaking up a lot of pressure here. Ronaldo getting a bit fortunate. And Andre Silva gets a bit fortunate. Fortunately for us, though, however, his shot once again is lacking. I don't know whether it's De Gea being amazing uh, in terms of positioning or the Portuguese players having very poor shot conversion rates. But we are doing well at the moment until Bernardo Silva finishes off a lovely play there. The quick passing really threw me off guard. It's something we haven't seen from Portugal in this game so far but they've gone ahead done it and now they've got the lead with half an hour to go we're looking to respond straight away the following kickoff Diego Costa who did score a brace in this real life fixture goes to David Silva looks to cut it back to Costa but his head up is just lacking and it goes to the new Wolverhampton goalkeeper in Rui Patricio and I mean that signing just touching on that signing that is an incredible piece of business again from, uh, from Wolves they're Jorge Mendes SC, like I've seen some people call them, but I wouldn't be mad if I was a Wolves fan. That is absolutely insane. Pretty excited to see how they do in this Premier League season. But regardless, 10 minutes to go here. Costa going through the first time shot, and he does get a goal. The equalizing goal, just like he got in real life in this fixture. He makes it one all. And we now have an opportunity, if we can continue piling on the pressure here, to get a result out of this. Silva cuts back the cross, and it goes to Alvaro Morata. And he is going to put us in the lead here, with only a matter of minutes remaining in this clash. Of course, not included in the Spain squad for the World Cup in real life. But I decided to, to take him for this playthrough. Whether he deserves to be there or not is a different question, but I decided to bring him into the squad, and he has gone ahead and got us what looks like the win here in the opening match day against Portugal. A lovely header there. Not too much Patricio could have done about that one. Love that animation. Into the bottom corner, and what a way to start our World Cup campaign. It has been. We hold on and collect all three points on match day one. A 2-1 victory against Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal. That is fantastic to see. But now, we look to secure our spot in the knockout rounds, in the round of 16, as we're going to come up against Iran, who did face a 3-1 loss to Morocco, excuse me, on the opening match day. So a different, different result com compared to what they got in real life. Of course, they got the last minute win, the 94th minute own goal win against Morocco in real life World Cup, but they do get a pretty humbling defeat there, and we're looking to pile on the pain, and looking to get ourselves through to the knockout rounds, or at least confirm our spot. A draw wouldn't do it, but a win certainly would. We're going to rock with a very similar lineup here, going with a 4 triple 2 formation, changing things up slightly, but ultimately trying to play a bit more of an attacking play style, whilst, I don't know, just trying to play through the midfield, really, and get a lot of service up to the names of Morata and Diego Costa, but we're attacking early on here. 11th minute, it's going to go through to Morata. Got the winning goal. Can he get a goal to start off the game? No, he cannot. The finesse shot is lacking and goes into the gloves of the Iranian goalkeeper. But we're going to continue to push here. 
Diego Costa switching to the outside. David Silva cutting around, looking for the support. Goes to Iniesta. Once again, the shot is just lacking. And we are unable to go ahead here. We want to get the lead before half time. We don't want to make it a last minute rush job like we did against Portugal. But we head into the second half with all the domination, all the opportunities, but no goals to prove for it. So we're looking to start off the second half here with a goal. Morata back post. David Silva on the volley, but the angle is just too acute for him. And he is unable to slot it into the side of the goals, missing and going out for a goal kick. But now. I run on the break here. A lot of space. They go for the finesse. But fortunately for our cause, it is just a little bit too far wide. And it's looking like it's going to be a nil all draw unless I run. Get a last minute winner. They take the first time shot. But they, they were never going to get in from there, were they? And ultimately, that's how the game's going to end. A game which I feel like we should have won. But ultimately, we didn't make the most of the opportunities. And it is a draw on match day two. So, heading into the final match day against Morocco, there is a lot that could happen here. I think a win is a definite because both Portugal and Morocco on three points. And realistically, I don't know if I see Iran getting a result against Portugal. So, if we lose here, or even if we, no, if we lose, yes, if we lose, we're in big, big strife for the knockout round. So, we're going to hopefully get the result. We're going to change up front, taking off Alvaro Morata, Bringing on Iago Aspas, who has made the journey to Russia with the Spanish team, was selected for the side. But this Moroccan team, we can't sleep on them. They've got a lot of quality uh, quality talent. Amrabat in there, Hakim Ziyech, they've got uh, Benassia, they've got a decent side here. So if anybody can cause an upset against us, it is Morocco. But we're looking to start off strong. Nacho Fernandez, first minute of the game, running past his Real Madrid teammate in Hakimi. It goes there! And we are going to get the advantage. It's going to ultimately go down as an away, uh, sorry, an own goal. But that is not going to stop Diego Costa from reveling in the glory of an opening World Cup goal. And we're going to have the 1-0 advantage here. As you can see, an own goal. A lovely finish there from the Moroccan player. And that gives us the lead in the 16th minute. Sergio Busquets, some good pressure on the defender. Diego Costa looking to make it a 2-0 scoreline. But it is saved there from the Moroccan goalkeeper. We push on and off the resulting corner. Iniesta in there. Diego Costa finally gets one for himself. If he didn't score the first one, he definitely scored that one. He's got to be cut that he didn't get a, a brace so far, but there's plenty of time for that because we are 2-0 up 18 minutes into it. But we progress to the half an hour mark, looking to hold on to this result. Amrabat goes to the back post. We're going to clear it away, and we're going to hopefully hit them on the counter-attack now. Benassia just breaks up the play. They go to Hakimi. The man that's got plenty of experience playing against Spanish footballers goes there. And what a goal it is from Bulsafa. He makes it 2-1. And honestly, I cannot even be mad with that finish. That was absolutely incredible. And that is a 2-1 scoreline here. Morocco well and truly back into this clash. And that is probably the best goal we're going to see for this entire World Cup campaign. The internet would almost break if he scored that in real life. I would love to see the reactions. And Morocco... They're coming for it. They almost got an equaliser there on the stroke of half time. But ultimately, we head into the second half here with a 2-1 advantage. Looking to hold on. And we move all the way to the 84th minute. Morocco going through here. They're going to go. And it's a fingertip save from Dafa De Gea. Fortunately offside. But regardless, a big time save there from the Spanish goalkeeper. We're looking to shore up the result here. Diego Costa going through. It's a great save on the angle. Just can't get that third goal to put the result to bed. Into stoppage time. Can we finally get that third goal? Iago Aspas going to Koke. Koke is going to run through. Looking for an option. He's getting pulled by Hakimi. On the edge of the box. Taken down. Ankles clipped. No VAR needed for this one. That is a sure penalty there. Koke, his ankles taken out from underneath him. Lazy challenge there from Hakimi. Lucky not to be a red, but we're going to get the opportunity now to put this one to bed. Iago Aspas sending it. The keeper dives the right way, but ultimately, there's not going to be enough time for Morocco to launch a counter-attack. We hold on despite a missed penalty opportunity and suffer a 2, not even suffer, get a 2-1 result, which will secure our place in the knockout rounds. We finish top of Group B, and now it's a question to see how Portugal went against Iran. We move on here, and it is going to be a 2-1 result for Portugal. They finished second in the group, and ultimately they got eliminated in the round of 16 to Russia, 
but we, if you look to the top right hand corner, are taking on Uruguay. Can we get past Luis Suarez, Edinson Cavani, Muslera, Diego Godin? I'm just, just listing off the players here, but can we get ourselves through to the quarterfinals? We are about to find out. I'm rocking an almost identical side to the one I rocked against Morocco there. Busquets in the CDM spot. Silva, Isco up front or in the attacking mid spots. And then we've decided to bring Morata back into the side. Not overly impressed with how Iago Aspas performed in that game. But again, that striker position definitely up for grabs and definitely willing to play around with it regardless of how deep we get into the competition. But anyways, Cavani and Suarez are... Two players, obviously, we're going to have to watch out for and be on our A game to make sure that we do stop them from getting getting Uruguay through to the next stage. And that, that threat is proven there as Cavani almost got Uruguay the lead in the 15th minute. And they continue to attack here. Luis Suarez, edge of the box, going out there. Cavani, uh, that, they probably deserve the goal. That was beautiful build-up play. Fortunately, Cavani just doesn't have his shooting boots on. That's two opportunities that have almost grazed the post. We continue to attack, though. Our first real opportunity. Iniesta looking to get his name on the score sheet, but his shot is collected quite comfortably by Muslera. They're continuing to attack here. A big, big stop there from PK against his, Bar his Barcelona teammate, Suarez. Cavani, though, just before halftime, plays it. PK again, proving to be an important party. We just can't clear it away, and ultimately... De Gea's fingertips are the reason why Uruguay do not have the lead here. So, definitely need to be alert. We've definitely been warned following this first half performance. But how good would a goal be before halftime? David Silva holding it up in the box, looking for an opportunity. Goes in there, Sergio Busquets. But, unfortunately, the CDM is unable to finish off a decent build-up play. And we're going to head into the second half here with a nil all scoreline. Isco cutting around Pereira. Looking for an opportunity. Has enough space for himself. And Isco does get us the lead. You can't give somebody like Isco the opportunity like that. The space like that. I didn't mean to do that. The, the, the respect celebration. But I'll do it anyways. But what a finish that was from Isco. Potentially getting ourselves into the quarterfinals. We do not deserve that lead if I'm being 100% honest. But we have made the most of that opportunity. Lovely finish from Isco Disco. And we now look to capitalize on it. A second goal here would take a lot of the weight off of our shoulders. Murata looking to cut past Jimenez. Goes to Isco, looking for a brace. Plays it out wide to Silva. He just can't slot it home. Was trying to keep it along the ground. Put it in that bottom corner. But it is blown over the crossbar. Well over the crossbar. And that gives Uruguay potentially one last opportunity in this clash. Can they get themselves into extra time? It's going to be outside the box. It's blown over the crossbar. And ultimately, that is going to see Uruguay's disqualification, not even disqualification, just their dismissal from the World Cup. We get through to the quarterfinals where we have a massive clash ahead of us. We are taking on Argentina. Debatable whether they'll even qualify for the quarterfinals, let alone the round of 16 in real life, following a pretty poor start to the World Cup. But regardless, a big task ahead of us. Messi, Higuain, uh, Aguero, Dybala, Otamendi, all these big name players. Can we take out Argentina here? That is the question. Again, looking to keep a lot of solidarity with the side. Busquets, Iniesta retaining their spots. And then in the attacking mid spots, Isco has to stay up there. Great goal that got us into this stage. Morata retains his spot. Not, not that he really deserved it. None of the strikers had great games, but have decided to go with the same squad. And I am pleased, very pleased to see that Argentina are rocking the beautiful away strip. I am seriously considering picking up that kit. I have actually bought the Spain home jersey, the one we're wearing right now. I've got that. I bought that. And I think that's one of the most beautiful kits in this World Cup. But the Argentina away one does take the cake for me. So definitely always a great sight to see that beautiful away kit on the screen. I mean, Adidas did an incredible job with some of the kits in this World Cup. This has been one of the most aesthetically pleasing World Cups in terms of kits, but Messi looking to make an impact early on there, banging it off the crossbar. Danger not averted yet for Argentina, or for, for us against Argentina. Ramos, shoulder to shoulder contact. I thought that could have been a penalty, and I mean, if it was real life, the Argentinians would have gone for it, would have sold it, and would have been asking for VAR. And I gotta say, I wouldn't really blame them if they did, but we get a slice of luck up the other end. Otamenti giving away a penalty in the 54th minute 
And that is going to see David Silva stepping up against Romero, who in real life is out for the World Cup. Can we take the lead? We go for the cheeky chip. And Romero reads it. I have never tried to chip it off a penalty before. And there's a clear reason why I haven't. I think that'll be the last time I try to do a little penenka on a penalty. We do miss the penalty. So we're 0 from 2 in terms of penalties for the World Cup so far. But we're going to continue to attack Morata, trying to place it into that bottom right-hand corner. He is unable to do so. And we are still at a nil all scoreline here with some of the best opportunities. With half an hour to go, David Silva on the half volley. That was his opportunity to make up for the penalty miss. But again, it's a big save there from Romero. Arguably Argentina's man of the match so far. We move into the final 10 of this clash against Argentina. Again, Morata trying to smash that one into the bottom corner. And once again, deja vu as Romero makes the save. We are off for 30 more minutes of World Cup quarterfinal action. Nothing separates the two sides. And it is a nil or scoreline here. Headed into extra time. David Silva, slightly injured, but using his skills to get past the defender. Goes to Thiago, looking for an option that squares it. If I had my time again, I would have looked to take the shot. But it doesn't matter because we get yet another penalty. David Silva, to redeem himself. Can he do it? 96th minute. Looking to put it in the top right-hand corner. And it's gone over. David Silva, you are banned from penalty kick duties anymore. Oh, God. First the chip that is saved to the right, and then he just blows it over the crossbar. It has not been a good penalty-taking World Cup for me at all. We are 0-3 from penalties, and that does not give me much confidence if we have to go to a penalty shootout. But we're going to continue to push. It's going here, and Diego Costa! Beautiful ball from David Silva. Costa runs onto it at the back post and gives us a well-deserved 1-0 advantage here in the 101st minute. Lovely goal. And it just flew th so naturally. Such a natural builder. And such a lovely finish there. Great vision from David Silva. Arguably making up for the poor penalty takes. Great stuff from Diego Costa to get free of the defenders. And ultimately, that goal is going to see us progress into the semi-finals of the World Cup. We haven't been convincing at all in this World Cup. But we're going to need to be convincing in this game as we take on Germany. Germany have taken down Switzerland and England in the knockout stages. Can we end their run? They're looking to get back to back-to-back -to -back finals at the World Cup. Can we break that up? We're about to see. But really, I don't, I'm not super confident heading into this one. Hasn't been great performances at all. But we're about to find out. Koke comes into the starting 11. Iniesta very, very tired following that game against Argentina. Thiago starts... Considering David Silva is out for the rest of the tournament, unfortunately. He did pick up an injury in that game against Argentina. So, Thiago starts at the attacking mid-spot. Maybe look to bring on Marco Asensio as the game progresses. But we'll see how we go. See how the side feels. Mario Goethe, surprisingly selected for Germany here. Considering he was left out in real life. So, good to see FIFA's really taken realism on board in terms of the squads. But regardless, 13 minutes into it. Morata getting past the Kimmich challenge. Running down the line, looking for options, keeping our eye open for a squaring opportunity. He cuts it around beautifully there. Great shot, but a great save from Neuer to read it. That would have been a great solo goal if Morata was able to find the back of the net. But the 21st minute now, Timo Werner going to Thomas Muller. Back to Timo Werner. Through to Mario Goetze. Mario Goetze finds the back of the net for the Germans. But thankfully, the offside flag is raised by the linesman. And I would, have been abs I would have been super salty if Goethe, the man that's not even in the World Cup, scored the uh, go-ahead goal there for Germany. I would have been quite mad. But a beautiful ball there. Koke, the half volley. Oh, we've almost scored some screamers in this World Cup. Koke, the latest to join that long list. But it is going to be nil all heading into the second half. Going wide, he hummels, goes back. Great reflexes there from De Gea. Muller almost finding the lead there for Germany. And it's been a pretty dull second half. Pretty dull game in general. And we might be heading for back-to-back -back extra time. Good save again from David De Gea. Holds it to chew up a bit of a clock. But then I noticed that we had a bit of an opening through here. So we go to Isco. First time ball to Morata. Can Alvaro Morata do it? Can he get us into the World Cup final in the 90th minute? Cuts it back. Look at all the opportunities. Could have squared it. Hits the post. The follow-up save from Neuer. No, that, would have, that was the opportunity to be a national hero there, Morata. Isco 
Is there time for him to get it into the area? Gets past Kimmich, looks to square it, it goes to Koke. Kadira and Kimmich clear it. Germany now have a counter-attack, but the full-time whistle is blown. And we are off to extra time for the second straight game. That would have been absolutely incredible. Imagine the scenes if Morata found the back of the net there. But a scare as we start extra time. Muller, heavy touch, could have squared it to the back post. He had Timo Werner beaming in. That was an awesome opportunity there for the Germans. But they continue to attack us here. They go on back post. Hector, looking to square it, goes to Sammy Kadira. Kadira going to Timo Werner. Shot blocked from Nacho Fernandez. Goes there. The deflection, the corner. Jordi Alba potentially stopping Skodra Mustafi from getting the lead here for Germany. They've been all over us in extra time. Again, they start the second half of extra time. Capitalizing on our poor passing opportunities. Goretzka outside of the box. Deflection City goes to Royce. And another save there from David De Gea. He's stepping up big time for us. And ultimately, his contribution between the sticks results in us heading to a penalty shootout here. You never want to take on Germany in a penalty shootout. And we almost get off to a terrible start. Diego Costa beaming that one off the post, giving us the lead. Marco Royce is saved from De Gea. David De Gea stepping up amazingly for us in this game. Can Iniesta slot it? He is. Neuer glued to the spot. And we have a 2-0 advantage here. If we can stop Cruz. How big would that be? But ultimately, Cruz gives us the eyes, sends us the wrong way. And we just need to make sure we keep finding the back of the net. It will keep catching up to Germany. Every penalty that goes past and they don't save, then that just makes it better for us. So Timo Werner, what's he going to do? We think he's going left. And ultimately, we should have gone that way. Slight little hesitation there from our end. And Germany remain in this one. PK, can he? No, it's saved from Neuer. Perfect, perfect placement, I would say, for a goalkeeper to save a penalty. You'd never want to put it in the middle of the goals. And we are so unlucky not to make the save there. Kadira, almost saved by the feet of De Gea. Ramos, going to the right. Again, Neuer glued to the spot. This penalty shootout going on for a very long time. 4-3 in our favour. If we save this, though, we will be headed to the World Cup final. Hector goes and sends us the wrong way. A lovely penalty there from the German defender. Jose Callihon now onto it, looking for the top left-hand corner, and he cannons it off the crossbar. So it is all tied up now, if my math is correct. Leon Goretzka stepping up. It's four apiece. I think, no, if Germany score this, I think they win, and they blow it over the crossbar. So it is all tied up here. Asensio, can he put us into the driver's seat? He's going to go to the right-hand side, sending Neuer the wrong way. And now, if De Gea makes a save here against Thomas Muller, then we will be headed to the World Cup final. Come on. Are we going to make another save? Muller running up. Class penalty there. This shootout. So nerve-wracking. Busquets. Where's he going to go? He's going to keep it along the ground. Going to the left. And it is saved by Neuer, but put into the back of the net. And now, Mustafi. Will this be the moment? That we make the save. He hits it off the crossbar. We are World Cup final bound. We get the result on penalties. Such a long penalty shootout. But we finally get the result there. David De Gea, the hero of the game. What a game it was from the Manchester United shot stopper. And look at that. We are facing Russia in the World Cup final. They've taken down Portugal, France and Belgium. What is going on, Russia? I swear I've seen a lot of videos other YouTubers have made predicting the World Cup going through it. I think one sticks out in mind. That was the Spencer FC video where he simulated the World Cup. And bloody Russia made it to the World Cup final. I can't even... Did they win? I can't remember if they won in that simulation. Yeah, I think they won against England. So, Russia really heavily backed by the FIFA gods. And imagine the scenes if Russia made the World Cup final. I mean... In terms of underdogs at their own nation, like at their own home term tournament, this would be up there. I think back to 2002 where South Korea hosted the tournament and ultimately made it. I think they finished fourth in the tournament. So they made it to the semis and they were a massive underdog at that tournament. Russia would be an even bigger underdog in this tournament. And if they managed, if we managed to lose to Russia here, that would be absolutely monumental. But 
You would think we've got the upper hand. You would be feeling very confident heading into it that we would be getting the result. But Samadov goes through there and Russia get the bloody lead 17 minutes into it. And I'm not going to lie, playing this game, Russia felt harder than any team I have versed in this World Cup, all, all World Cup videos. I've made a few World Cup playthroughs. Russia, one of the toughest sides I've played. And they're continuing to attack here, and they almost double their advantage only 25 minutes into the game. A pretty dull first half, but it's been all Russia so far in this game. We've got just under half an hour remaining in this game, and we need to get back into this. Isco goes to Costa. The shot is straight at Igor Akinviv, and they put it back there. Fernandez puts it back for a corner. Off the resulting corner, Isco swings it in there. Costa, header back post. We needed someone to just run onto it and tap it in. Akinfeev does make the save. And we're kind of getting to a desperation style, uh, desperation time now because it's the 82nd minute. Busquets, edge of the box, forcing a big save there from Akinfeev. We're going to leave it out for a corner. And then we move on into the 86th minute. Time is running out. And Russia, only five minutes away from securing the World Cup title in their home nation, forcing a save there from David De Gea. And can you believe it? Russia win the World Cup. We lost the World Cup final to bloody Russia. Imagine the scenes if that happened in real life. But fellas, that is where we will conclude today's video, the World Cup playthrough of Spain. Not the result I expected. I expected us to get to a World Cup final, but did I expect us to lose to Russia? No, I didn't. But anyways, if you enjoyed the World Cup playthrough, make sure you leave a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Let me know who you want to do a World Cup playthrough next. But it's been Jared HD here. I am out. Peace. Just quickly before we finish off today's video, I would like to let you know that today's video is sponsored by the Real Madrid World of Football Experience. The Real Madrid World of Football Experience is a new state-of-the-art digital and physical interactive football experience designed for all ages. Through spectacular audio-visual displays, physical interactive football experiences, playable gaming technologies combined with historical club memorabilia, and stunning trophies, visitors can go behind the scenes to discover the culture, passion, players and epic victories that make Real Madrid the football club of the century. Housed under the roof of a massive 50 meter by 30 meter touring pavilion, Real Madrid World of Football Experience will offer visitors four immersive zones. The Real Madrid Exhibition Zone offers spectacular audiovisual displays and multimedia content to impart the club's historical journey, its unrivaled victories, and its galaxy of star players, past and present. Real Madrid's remarkable 13 Champions League Cups, the FIFA Club of the Century Trophy, and the most treasured Ballon d'Or and Golden Boot trophies will all be on display together for the first time ever outside of Madrid. In the 360 degree cinematic zone, visitors feel the passion and adrenaline pumping energy of match day from across the ages at Real Madrid's famous home, the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. Next, at the Come Play interactive zone, loaded with physical, digital, and playable technology, test your power, speed, and accuracy against the Real Madrid first team in the skills arena. Have fun in the FIFA gaming area and battle it out in the foosball battle zone, a gigantic 16 person foosball table. Finally, view the latest Real Madrid range and have your photo taken with Real Madrid players through green screen technology in the merchandise zone. So if you are in Melbourne and are interested in checking it all out, make sure you visit the Ticketek and Real Madrid World of Football Experience websites, which will be linked in the description for more inter information.